The Hornady Lock and Load AP Reloading Press is a professional grade, auto indexing, five station progressive press that features the patented lock and load bushing system, as well as a host of other features that make it more intuitive and better equipped for all your reloading needs. First, check and confirm the contents of the box with the parts list located in the owner's manual. Now, securely mount your Hornady Lock and Load AP on a solid level bench using the template found on the last page of the owner's manual. Use a hole punch to help locate each hole. The hole should be two and a quarter inches from the edge of the bench and three and three quarter inches apart. Securely mount the press using two 5 16 inch bolts. We also recommend using a 5 16 flat washer in addition to lock washers on the bottom side. Line up the holes in the cartridge catch bracket with the holes in the press frame. Insert and firmly tighten both bolts. Next, thread the press handle into the toggle at the bottom of the press and tighten the jam nut using a 15 16 inch wrench. After determining which shell plate is required for your application, put a small amount of general purpose grease on the shell plate ball detents located on the bottom of the shell plate and then on top of the surface of the subplate. You are now ready to install the shell plate. Remove the shell plate retainer bolt and flat washer from the subplate. Align the shell plate with the keyed drive hub. Thread the shell plate retainer bolt and washer into the drive hub and gently tighten using a 5 16 inch hex wrench. Do not over tighten as it may damage the drive hub or pulse. Next, stretch the case retainer spring around the shell plate. While cycling the press, push the case retainer spring into the relieved area on the subplate. You will need to cycle the press a couple of stations to achieve these results. When needing to remove the shell plate for changeover, use a 5 16 inch hex wrench and Hornady Lock and Load Deluxe die wrench to hold the shell plate while loosening. Determine which primer slide is required for your application. If changeover is needed, unhook the spring attached to the primer slide and remove the slide from the subplate. Place the correct primer slide flat side up into the groove on the subplate and slide it forward. With one end of the spring attached to the subplate, attach the other end of the spring to the pin on the primer slide. The primer cedar punches are installed from the bottom of the subplate. Raise the ram to the top of the stroke. Use a 7 16 wrench to loosen the primer cedar punch and unscrew it from the subplate. When installing the correct primer cedar punch, tighten it snug with a wrench, but do not over tighten the primer punch. Next, place the correct primer tube with the shouldered end of the tube facing down into the center hole of the primer body. Slip the threaded end of the primer tube housing over the primer tube and onto the primer body. Screw the primer tube housing onto the primer body, tighten very lightly. Place the primer tube support over the primer feed tube and into the primer tube housing. Slide the plastic tube over the spent primer tube to help direct spent primers into your catch bin. To change primer components after reloading, you will need to empty the primer feed tube. Do this by first raising the ram to the top of the stroke and removing the cap screw. Next, cup your hand under the primer tube and rotate the primer feed body assembly clockwise to catch the primers. Case Activated Powder Drop Assembly The lock and load powder measure has been treated with a rust preventative that must be removed prior to use. We recommend that you disassemble the powder drop to clean and degrease all metal parts with Hornady One-Shot Gun Cleaner and Lube, being sure to avoid spraying plastic parts. To begin disassembly, set the rotor with the metering unit perpendicular to the axis of the body. Press the push button and hold it down while removing the metering unit. Unscrew the drop tube from the bottom of the powder measure. Remove the handle or rotating arm from the powder measure by removing the two attaching screws with an 8 inch hex wrench.
Slide the rotor out of the body by pressing gently on the handle side of the rotor. Remove the lock nut, O-ring, and sleeve from the metering plunger. Spray all metal parts liberally with Hornady One-Shot Gun Cleaner and Lube. Avoid spraying plastic parts. Be sure all rust preventative has been removed. Allow it to dry thoroughly before reassembling. You may need to wipe away excess lubricant with a rag. You are now ready to begin reassembly. First, assemble the metering unit by threading the sleeve properly onto the metering plunger with the grooved end of the sleeve threading on first. followed by the O-ring and the lock nut. Slide the rotor into the body with the screw hole side facing the handle and the push button facing to the left. Next, connect the handle to the linkage and line up the holes in the handle with the holes on the rotor. Insert and tighten the two attaching screws with an 8th inch hex wrench. Screw in the drop tube into the bottom of the powder measure. Set the rotor perpendicular to the axis of the body. Press the push button and hold it down while inserting the metering unit. Preparing to load. Screw the measure adapter onto the lock and load bushing several turns. Place the lower assembly into the top of the press and rotate to lock into the lock and load bushing. Insert the appropriate powder bushing sleeve. Insert the powder drop tube into the lower assembly. Connect the linkage to the lower assembly by sliding the linkage over the thumb screw and tighten. Next, connect the vertical spring to the spring nuts on the case-activated powder drop. Drop the baffle into the powder hopper and place the large capacity hopper onto the cartridge catch bracket. Now insert the appropriate dies into the press. In this case, we are setting up to load 9mm Luger without using a powder through expander. We will place the full length size die in station 1, the expander die in station 2, the powder drop in station 3, and the seating die in station 4. You will need to adjust the dies to the desired position before you begin reloading. Once your dies are set, use the primer pickup tube to pick up the primers with the flat base side facing up. Flip the primer pickup tube and drop the primers anvil side up into the primer tube, followed by the primer follower. Fill the hopper on the powder drop to any desired level. It is recommended to keep the hopper full at approximately the same level throughout your reloading process for uniform charges. To begin reloading, start with a single empty cartridge case and run it through all the loading stations to check for adjustments. Make sure the sizing die is adjusted properly and the depriming pin knocks out the old primer. Check to make sure the primer slide picked up a primer from the primer tube. Place the cartridge case back into station 2 and push the press handle away from you past the stop to seat the primer. Stop and check to make sure that the primer is being seated to the correct depth. Reinsert the case and check to make sure that the expander die is flaring the case properly. Next. Drop powder in the case using the case activated powder drop and verify the weight on a properly calibrated scale. Changes to the powder charge can be made by adjusting the powder metering insert. Place a bullet on top of the case and lower the handle to seat the bullet. Use calipers to verify that the bullet is seated to the proper depth. With all adjustments made, you are now ready to begin your reloading process.